Today I want to look at a very important issue, the most important issue we might say in the Holy Scriptures and that is the issue of the matter of does the Lord Jesus know you? Does he recognise you? Does he uh, have a relationship with you? And I want to, I want us to consider, to begin with, if we are on a a, a train, let me hold this up for you, and um, we are going along, the train is going along these lines here, and going up, and I haven't got an extension for this, but the train is going up, up here along this track, but really the way to go is to go along this track off to the side. In order to achieve that, of course, we have an operation here called points. That's what it's called in the English language. I don't know what it is in Tagalog, but these are called points. And depending on the movement of the points is whether the train goes up along this one track here, or if the points are moved, the train will go off in another direction. In times gone by we had a signal man who would operate these points. I think it's done all electronically now, automatically, but a signal man would operate the signals for the train driver to, to slow down or stop or to proceed and the signal man would also operate the points which is this device here so that when the train approached the the, the split, the division, the train would either continue going straight or if the signalman changed the points, the train would go off to the in the other direction, onto the other line. I'll come back to that very shortly indeed. I want to read from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew to begin with, chapter 7, verses 21, 22 and 23. Just three verses. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, 22, 23. And this is part of what is commonly called the Sermon on the Mount, the teaching of the Lord Jesus. And he says in verse 21, chapter 7, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, <clears throat> Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Very clear that at the appointed time, when we each one of us comes to appear before the Lord Jesus, for, for many people, the Lord Jesus will say, Who are you? I never knew you. Depart from me. Go away. For many people, that will be the reality. And their destination will be, to use this visual aid here their destination they are going along the track to hell to destruction because when we are born when we are conceived actually when we are conceived and then born we are born on this particular track which is going to hell and eventually the lake of fire that is the track of our life and if we continue on this same one track here when we appear before the Lord Jesus, he will say, Who are you? I never knew you. Depart from me. You see, because I'm calling this message the divine signalman. It's as if the Lord Jesus is the signalman who operates these points. And he is the only one who can divert your life from going on this one track to destruction, to hell and the lake of fire. He is the only one who can switch the points, change the points, to take your life onto another track, which is to be with him forever and ever. Heaven and eternal bliss in the new heaven and the new earth by going in this direction. 
Otherwise, he will say to you, as he says, he said, he will say to you, no matter what you have done in his name, he will say to you, I never knew you. Who are you? Depart from me. He will say, you, will, you must continue on this track, the same track you have been on for all of your life. You must continue on that. Depart from me. Go the other way. Does that sound harsh? Does that sound hard? Well, we, are, we must never criticise Almighty God. He knows. He knows what we need. And what we need is to be saved, rescued and delivered from this particular track, which is the devil's track. It's the devil's train that people are on. And we need, when we approach this point, we need to be diverted to go and be into the kingdom of God. It is as simple as that. So no, the Lord is not unfair. He's not unjust. He's not horrible. He wants people to come and be in this relationship with him. But the reality is, many people will continue on this track and go to hell. Some people will, at this point, juncture here, they will go to this track and to be with the Lord Jesus. The will of God. Let's have a look just in passing briefly with a couple of scriptures for me to prove to you that it is God's will that people come into a relationship with him. Because when he says here, Jesus, in verse 23, I never knew you, it's like this. I know who president, your president is. I know who President Duterte is. But I don't know him. In the same way, the Lord Jesus knows everybody. They know He knows who they are. But he doesn't know them in the sense of having a relationship with them. And this is what it's all about. Being in relationship, a loving relationship with God. Acts, the two scriptures I want to look at quickly, very quickly. Acts. Chapter 17, verse 30. Just the one verse. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 30. Where we are told in the speech there, which uh, Paul is giving in Athens. Paul says, truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repent. It's a very, it's the vital element of the gospel message of salvation and entering into a relationship with the Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus is repent. And this is repeated in the other scripture I want to look at very briefly in 2 Peter chapter 3 and it's verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 9, which says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All means everybody of any nationality, wherever people live, including you who are listening to this message, watching this message. You are part of the all who, whom God wishes to come to repentance and therefore into a relationship with him. Once we are in that relationship with him, then as we come on this track here, the straight track that goes to hell and the lake of fire, as we approach the points, the divine signalman, the Lord Jesus, will change the points and we will then go off onto this track to be with him forever and ever. And he, as I have mentioned, I believe, he is the only one who can change the direction of your life. He is the only one who can change these, this, these points from you going to hell into coming into a relationship with the Father in heaven, which will be for eternity. Let's look at another very serious passage of scripture. It's in Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 
chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, and I'm going to read from verses 22 to 30. Verses 22 to 30 of Luke chapter 13. And he, that's Jesus of course, and he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, to you, but he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. I don't know what to say really. Well, I do know what to say, but it's it's a picture which is so sad because there are so many people who are on this track, the devil's track, may I call it, the, on the, the track to hell and the lake of fire. But they think they are going on this track to heaven. That's their belief or their hope. But when they arrive before the divine signalman, the Lord Jesus, he will say, who are you? I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart, go away. You continue on the track that you have chosen. Because there have been, there has been a time, there have been times when you have heard the message of salvation. You have heard and yet you have rejected. It has been your choice to stay on this track rather than me changing the points for you to come on this track. It's your choice, it's your decision. And it says here in verse 24, we have just read this, Luke 13 verse 24, strive to enter through the narrow gate. That doesn't mean we earn our salvation by doing, doing, doing things. No, not at all. Strive, in the Greek there, the verb is agonizomai. My pronunciation is not good. Agonizimai, which means, sounds a bit like agony, but it's not physical agony. It's 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 anguish. It's making a decision, make, being determined to, to to want to be with the Lord God forever and ever, and putting your faith and trust in what the Lord Jesus did on the cross, following re your repentance. We've looked at repentance already, so this is a. A definite decision that you make, Lord, I want to come into the kingdom of God. Lord, I want to be in a relationship with you. Lord, I'm desperate. I do not want to stay on this track to destruction. I want you, almighty God, the Lord Jesus, I want you and I need you to change the points so that I'm on the track to be with you. It's that important. It's that fundamental. It is that serious that you must strive you must come to a decision and make that decision saying yes Lord Jesus I thank you because many in verse 24 will seek to enter and will not be able there will be many people who will be on this track to hell they will want to go and change onto the right track but the Lord Jesus they will not be able to because the Lord Jesus will say I do not know you the time to make a decision about following the Lord Jesus, accepting salvation, is now, today. 
if you have not yet made that decision, that, that agonizomai, that, that, oh, Lord, yes, I understand and I must do this today. Now is the ta time to make that decision. Because the master of the house, when this is the picture we are given here, in verse 25, once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door. I want, Lord, Lord, let me in. Open up. Oh, Lord, open up. Lord, Lord, open up. Lord, please change the points. Change, operate this device. Change the points. I want to change from this track onto this track. Lord Jesus, please. It's too late by then. It's too late. It's too late. I do not know you. Where are you from? Tragic, sad, <sighs> terrible. And it's no good saying. Let's look at verse 26 of Luke 13. It's no good saying. We ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. It is no good saying to the Lord Jesus then, I went to church. Lord, I, Jesus, I, I used to go to church every Sunday. I, I, I went to Christ our banner most weeks or every, every week I went to Christ our banner. I do not know you. Where are you from? Will be the answer. It, it, it will be no good, useless saying to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I was a good person. I helped lots of people. I gave money to charity. Who are you? I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me. Continue on the, on the track which you have chosen. You see, all these things which we hope, which people hope, will give us salvation, which will take us from one track to another, they are useless. A waste of time. The only way to change direction, to change onto the right track, to ensure that the Lord Jesus, the divine signalman, will change the points is by putting your faith and trust in what he did for you and me and for all on that cross at Calvary. And he asks you to repent. In fact, he commands you to repent, to come to your senses, to make a decision in your mind that you will want to follow the Lord Jesus so that you can be forgiven of your sinfulness and you can be transferred from one track onto another track. It's no good pleading with the Lord Jesus when you stand before him in judgment. Your plea, your calling out, your crying out, it will be too late. The time for that is absolutely now. So that's why I've called this message the Divine Signalman, because without wishing to be disrespectful to the Lord Jesus, he is, of course, he is God. He's not somebody who works on the, on the railways. But it's an illustration that when we approach the division in the track, when we come before the Lord Jesus in judgment, as we all will, Different types of judgment. One judgment for Christians, one judgment for non-Christians. And the non-Christians who are on this track, people who are not Christians on this track, when they die, they will stay on this track. Going to hell and then the lake of fire. And in the lake of fire there is weeping and gnashing of te teeth. Eternal torment. The devil will be there. The demons will be there. All the nasty, horrible criminals will be there. All the people who we do not want to be with, most of them will be there in hell and the lake of fire. It's a frightening thought. But the Lord Jesus wants everybody, by the time they reach this division, this point in, this, this point in the point where the points are, that he will say, yes welcome you i have prepared a place for you he will say come on to this track and join me in the kingdom of god so today if you have not yet given your life to the lord jesus understanding that you are sinful and dirty and you need to be cleaned and cleansed and given a new start born again by the spirit of god born from above if you have not yet made that decision then strive to make that decision now, absolutely, because nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. 
we, we don't know when we will be called home. We do not know when we are going to pass away. We do not know these things. We cannot tell the future. That's why it is imperative, it is essential that we now make this decision to give ourselves completely, surrender ourselves to the Lord Jesus, who is, so to speak, the divine signalman, who will ensure then that when you reach this point in judgment, you will come off one track and you will go on to the track which leads to bliss if you like, a, a land flowing with milk and honey, which is what the Bible called the land where the Jews were meant to be living in and occupy, but it will be a heavenly land flowing with milk and honey. He will lead us on into green pastures like the good shepherd which he is. And that's a picture not just in this life, but also for the future. So come on board to the train, so to speak. Make the decision to follow Jesus so that you will not go the other way.